There are a lot of sources of brain fog. The most obvious one would be a poor night's sleep. And mm -hmm. sleep, of course, being the most fundamental layer of mental and physical health. I mean, you don't sleep well for one night, you're probably okay. For two nights, you start to fall apart. Three, four nights, mm. you're, you're really a degraded version of yourself in every aspect. Emotionality is off, ability to do most anything is off, hormones start suffering. So sleep is, is fundamental. But assuming that you slept well, there are a number of things. One is your breathing patterns. Mm -hmm. We often get into discussions of breathing, but this is a slightly different one than we've had in the past. You know, a lot of people have sleep apnea. They are not getting enough oxygen during their sleep uh, or they are mouth breathing during sleep. Mm -hmm. These days, it's become popular in some circles to take a little bit of medical tape and tape the mouth shut yeah. and to learn to be a nasal breather. And there is excellent evidence now that being a nasal breather most of the time uh, as long as you're not speaking or eating or exercising hard enough that you would need to breathe through your mouth, uh, that it's beneficial to be a nasal breather mm -hmm. for a couple of reasons. First of all, if you are nasal deliberately nasal breathing during the day, the tendency is that you will nasal breathe at night, which tends to lead to less sleep apnea, less mouth breathing during the middle of the night, and less brain fog. Mm. Why brain fog? Well, during sleep, a number of restorative processes occur but if you're not getting enough oxygen into the system, the brain is literally becoming hypoxic and a lot of the cleaning out mechanisms, the, the lymphatic system, et cetera, as they're called, don't get an opportunity to function as well as they ought to. So you wake up in the morning, you slept your normal six to eight hours, but you're feeling kind of groggy and out of it. Mm. And of course there could be other reasons that you're experiencing brain fog. Maybe, you know, for people that drink alcohol the night before, maybe they had alcohol, for people that mm -hmm. maybe they ate a meal that was too large before sleep, maybe right. any number of reasons, right? Gotcha. But um, getting adequate oxygenation of the brain during sleep is key. So learn to be a nasal breather. And for those of you out there that say, well, I have a deviated septum. A lot of people think they have deviated right. septums. The problem is they're not <laughs> nasal breathing enough. The sinuses actually can learn to dilate if you nasal breathe. Huh. Uh, exercising while nasal breathing it will kind of depend on the sport. Like if you box, oftentimes there's the need to do a shh or, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like exhale on impact type thing. So I, I don't think anyone should tamper with their normal breathing patterns as it relates to sport or singing or some, you know, activity. But what I'm talking about is when you're just standing around, when you're walking down the street, any low level activity, you're working at your desk, yeah. you should be nasal breathing and breathing regularly. That will reduce brain fog in many right. cases, absolutely. It's interesting. I think the important thing to bring us back to brain fog is that you want to get oxygen into the system and ideally you're bringing that oxygen into the system mainly through your nose and not through your mouth. It doesn't mean that breathing through your mouth is a terrible thing to do, it just means that most of the time you want to be breathing deeply and rather slowly through the nose, maybe anywhere from four or five breaths per minute. I'm, I, don't hold me too close to that number, but mm -hmm. you wanna be breathing slowly and deeply through your nose most of the time. One of the big mistakes that we've made in the last few years as a, as a culture is assuming that blue light is bad. During the day, lots of blue light is great because it, th that's the, the best signal for these cells that wake up your, your system. It activates all sorts of important hormone pathways and mm -hmm. wakefulness pathways. Interesting. It, it can reduce brain fog in, in some sense. Sure it's in the evening that you want to avoid blue lights and bright lights of any kind. We can talk about that. I think we're also gonna hear a lot about the value of salt. Salt is an essential nutrient. Obviously people with hypertension should not be consuming too much salt, but there's a lot of good science now to support the fact that if you're feeling lightheaded or you feel like you have quote unquote low blood sugar, oftentimes taking a little pinch of salt, putting it in some water and drinking that, maybe with some lemon juice to adjust the taste, all of a sudden you your shaking stabilizes, you feel more alert. Why? Because salt salt and water have an interesting relationship. It increases blood volume and oftentimes then you're getting more blood flow to the brain simply by increasing your sodium intake. And wow. uh, so I think we're- So we're, mate's got a lot of those ingredients. Mate doesn't have, has electrolytes, it doesn't have salt. Yeah. But for, I would say for anyone that's thinking about their morning routine and brain fog, you know, there's no reason why in your morning water you might just put a little tiny pinch of salt. And if you're drinking a lot of coffee in any form, or, or caffeine in any form, I should say, then you want to be sure you're getting enough sodium. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that if you drink a lot of caffeine that you'll crave sodium. And this has a whole relationship in the kidney and aldosterone, and we don't have time to go into it, but I always make sure that if I'm drinking water before or with my caffeine that I try and put a little bit of salt in it. Got it, okay. Yeah.